Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat in which we will discuss risk assessment procedures. In this session, we will introduce the concept of risk assessment and why do we need risk assessment procedures. Well, let's think about it from a pr practical perspective. When you go on vacation, do you plan ahead? Sure, you want to know which airline you are taking if you're traveling, the hotel, uh, you want to know the sites you're gonna be seeing, maybe the restaurants you want to visit, sightseeing so on and so forth what's the alternative the alternative is not plan and try to go on vacation what would happen you will waste time resources and you will not get the most out of your vacation the same concept applied to an audit you don't want to walk in blindly to an audit you need to be prepared and plan ahead walking blindly is ineffective the audit will be ineffective and risky because you don't have the essential preparation. You don't have the essential understanding and planning of the business. So without proper risk assessment, which we will discuss today, the auditors may overlook critical issues because you did not prepare for it. You did not anticipate it. You did not plan for it. Obviously, you will waste resources because you're going to be not utilizing the resources in the proper place. And at the end, deliverable unreliable results, which will affect the credibility of the audit, the credibility of the audit report. So thorough preparation ensures accuracy to, the, to a sense of, you know, proper financial reporting, efficiency, and most importantly, you need the plan to be credible. Now, it's not, it's not, it's not something that's optional. You have to do risk assessment. I'm just planting the basic idea. Why do we need it? So in this session, we will start to discuss what are the procedures in risk assessment. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles, my accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses, broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. So the risk assessment proce procedures, we conduct risk assessment for two primary audit objectives. One, is to identify and evaluate the risk of material misstatement in an entity's financial statement. What does that mean? It, in, it, it means we are going to analyze factors that could lead to significant errors or fraudulent reporting. We need to identify those risks before we start because if we identify them, we would allocate the proper resources, we will, we will study the controls, and we will conduct the proper testing. That's why we need to know which one are they, they are subject to risk of material misstatement. That's one. Two, we want to make informed audit decision because once we start the audit, we want to have a plan. We want to make informed plan guiding us in subsequent audit procedure and determining the audit strategy. We don't just create the strategy as we go along. We have to prepare it up front. And part of that is conducting the risk assessment to determine which audit procedures I need to follow. Specifically, this would include stuff like what? Determining what constitute materiality, which is what? The threshold at which inaccuracy would influence the decision making by financial statement users. So the first thing is, did you set up your materiality? That's part of the planning phase. What's materiality? For example, for an XYZ corporation, we could set materiality at 20,000. What, what, what does that tell us? It tells us that any misstatement exceeding this amount would influence the user's decision. Now we're going to have several recordings about materiality. In this session, we will talk about a lot of information, but we will not cover it in depth because this is an overall. So one thing, one of, one, one of the objective is to determine the materiality as part of audit strategy. That's one. Two, you have to evaluate the entity selection and application of accounting policies to make sure they comply with relevant standard and they are appropriately reflecting business reality. So what does that mean? So if the audit, auditor, if the ABC company is using certain revenue recognition, you want to make sure that this revenue recognition align with the audit accounting standard to make sure they are not recording fictitious sales or sales 
prematurely. So making sure we know we understand the accounting policies for this company before we start. So we understand which revenue recognition we will be using. Also, we want to highlight crucial financial statement disclosure and pinpoint areas of heightened risk where misstatements are likely to occur. What, what does that mean? It means look ahead of time. You're going to have to make disclosures. Plan to see which areas of these disclosures are subject to a higher risk. For example, the auditor might flag significant disclosure about a major lawsuit facing the company, identifying it as an area with potential misstatement risk. What does that mean? It means we have to be more careful. We have to allocate more resources or the proper resources or a more senior staff to that to that event, which is a lawsuit in this situation. Also, setting accurate expectation for analytical procedures. We're going to conduct analytical procedures. We'll talk a lot, a lot about analytical procedures. How do we set those procedures? We have to, we have to determine this upfront, which assists auditor in evaluating financial information by comparing recorded data against expectation. We set those analytical procedures and we're, we're compared to it. How do we set this up? For example, we compare this year's sales to expected sales based on growth trend of 480. Helps the auditor investigate any discrepancies. Once again, you have to set those expectations ahead of time, part of your risk assessment, because you're going to set the expectation, look at the record, and say, where do I stand here? Am I close enough or am I off? Am I, if I am off, why? That could be a red flag, an area that I need to focus more on. Also, it will help in designing targeted audit procedures, including comprehensive test of control and detailed substantive testing to confirm financial data accuracy. Ahead of time, once I plan, I can determine which test of control and which substantive procedures I need to carry. For example, auditors decide to perform detailed test of payroll controls and substantive control expense reviews for the EF company due to past payroll accuracies. Well, I have to plan those procedures ahead of time. Now, would I change them along the way? I might have to, but I have to plan ahead of time. Also, planning would help in reviewing audit, certing audit evidence rigorously, ensuring it's relevant, reliable, and adequate to support the audit opinion. Auditor would examine bank statement, confirming their authentic, authenticity and reliability to verify the company's cash balances. So, 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 the risk assessment procedures will help us make informed decision about all the all the topics that I discussed here. For now, let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. An auditor is evaluating the materiality for a mid-sized software company, Innovate Tech determines that any misstatement exceeding 35,000 would likely influence the decision of the financial statement user. So the auditor is primarily using which principle when we say any misstatement above 35 is material? Is it professional skepticism? Skepticism? Is it materiality threshold? Is this an audit assertion? Or is this an internal control reliance? Now you have to understand each one of those topic. Is it professional skepticism? Well, what is professional skepticism? Well, professional skepticism means what? You have to maintain a questioning mindset. Always question everything that you are looking at. Is this what we're doing here? No, it's not. This is not what we are doing here. Now, we are setting a specific number. Is it materiality threshold? I would say yes. Materiality threshold is defined as what? As the limit beyond any accuracy or misstatement would influence the users. And here what we're saying, exceeding 35,000 would influence the users. I would say between A and B, I will take B. Now, this is just a basic idea of materiality. We're going to have two to three long session about materiality. This is just an overview. Is it audit assertions? No. Audit assertions uh, uh, relate to the representation that management makes about the financial statement, and we'll talk about the audit assertions later on. You have to be familiar with them. Occurrence, completeness, existence, so on and so forth. This is not audit assertion. Is it internal control reliance? This is, what does it mean internal control reliance? It means you're relying on the internal control about for the company. Well, 
it has nothing to do with the 35,000 materiality threshold that's out so the materiality threshold deals with what amount do we set as if we exceed this amount the financial statements are not fairly presented we'll talk about materiality later on much more in depth what should you do now you want to go to Farhat lectures look at additional resources multiple choice true false lectures if there's any exercises simulations that will help you whether you are an accounting auditing student or a CPA exam candidate invest in yourself that's the best investment you can make